Excellent. All right. Um, depending on how you install System Platform and where you install it to, um, the things you're looking for to add operational capabilities are going to be um, in your MES installation directory. And in my case, that's on a separate drive because somebody else built this virtual machine for me and did an excellent job. So let's have a quick look at D drive, which is the applications drive on my machine. And I think it's under Wonderware, MES, App Objects, and we have an operations capability, sample recording, and utilization. We can import all three at once. Standard options are fine. This doesn't take a massive amount of time, maybe two or three minutes. So whilst we're doing that, we can talk about a few other things. One of the things we want to be able to do with our plant is um, schedule jobs, storing items, running jobs. Uh, typically, different levels in the hierarchy are going to do this. Warehouses obviously are going to store items. Makes sense. Um, you might want a piece of equipment can run a job, but equipment doesn't decide when to run jobs. It just gets instructed to. And that's why we have this model hierarchy where we've got an operation that lives above the equipment. So in terms of an overview of what we really want to do, we want to be able to have an, an overarching system that says, if I want to do the process of mixing ingredients, the operation is going to need to be scheduled. And then the schedule, when it comes time, is going to, time being the triggers are set off or time is correct or the pre preceding processes are complete, the operation itself is going to start the, the actual physical piece of equipment and the equipment is going to run the process. And that means that the, um, the job is actually going to run against a piece of equipment. So in the case of our existing model that we looked at, oh, I've closed the spreadsheet. Um, the, the text file. When we do the unit packing, we're not going to want to be able to trigger unit packing as an idea. We want to be able to trigger the execution of the job of packing a unit is going to be implemented on a machine because a machine physically packs that unit. And that's why we have this, this three levels of process, operation and equipment. Okay, so we have OCOs imported. So now we get a bunch of new ones. We get the sample recording object utilization and operations. Operations can be used to trigger jobs, set up storage, things like that. Utilization works out um, OEE, um, operational efficiency. Uh, sample recording used for quality samples, um, triggered against time or against the change of a work order or things like that. So you can schedule certain parameters to be tested. You can work out if a product is good or bad and automate all that process. Regardless of all that, let's have a look at some different OCOs that we're going to want. We know that we want to do some operations. So we want to do some storage, we want to do some um, executing jobs and scheduling jobs and things like that. So all of that stuff's going to come from our operational capability. So let's go control shift N and we'll do our little trick of instantiating an AOCO. Now we'll just shorten it to OCO because that's what everybody calls it. Control shift N. A, B, O, C, O. Now, we're going to want to be able to store things in a warehouse, but we don't care about executing a job. When we're executing a job on equipment, we don't care about storage. So we're gonna make different OCOs for our different kinds of, of model um, objects. So we're gonna say Control Shift N. All warehouses are gonna have common properties. So let's give ourselves and a warehouse OCO. Now we want instances of this, and we're going to say, this is going to be our raw goods warehouse OCO. Uh, new, we're going to want our work in progress OCO. So we're going to be able to store and consume. So we're going to produce to and consume from our work in progress. So that's going to need some settings. Let's create one more for our finished goods warehouse. Finished goods warehouse OCO. Now at the individual levels, we don't really care about which ones do what kind of thing, but we do know 
that all of them have one thing in common. All warehouses are going to store some items for us. So we're going to open this up. We're going to try not to get mad at how slow it is. And we're going to say this entity can store items. And of course all the children that inherit from it are going to do the same. Let's lock up our unused parameters. And in fact, let's lock up all of the ones. Uh, you might need to see the help file for understanding exactly what this means. It's worth knowing what that means, but you'll have to look that up. That's not something I want to go into right now. Okay, let's save that. So now all of our warehouses are going to inherit the ability to store items. And as we were saying before, there's a few other things we want to be able to do. So we also want to have an operation operation OCO. Now this one's going to do some slightly different things. All of the operation OCOs are going to be able to schedule jobs because we want our operation to be able to tell the equipment that it's going to need to run. So we're going to say this entity can't run a job because it's a theoretical, it's an operation, not an actual piece of equipment. So we're going to say it can schedule a job. Well, let's lock up all these. We're going to create an operation for each one of our operation objects further up the tree in just a moment. But let's make their parent types first because it's a bit quicker and it's more logical to set them before we create the instances. So now we have equipment. And equipment's going to actually execute, run a job. Later on, if we get a chance, we'll do things like enabling specifications. But right now, we're going to say a piece of equipment can run a job. That's all it can do. It can't store items. It can't schedule work. It's not that clever. So let's save that. The next step is going to be to create a piece of equipment, an OCO, sorry, for every piece of equipment. Let's rename that with an OCO so it's clear. Each piece of equipment is going to get an instance of an OCO that allows it to execute or run a job. Each operation that we have in our, in our model up here each one of these operations is going to have an OCO that allows it to schedule jobs. And each warehouse is already set to be able to store items. So let's move our OCO object underneath in our model hierarchy, um, underneath the individual warehouses. So what this gives us is the object of WIP, our work in progress warehouse object, has got some tags and some internal parameters and things. When we put this object underneath it in the hierarchy, we now get some extra tags, some extra scripts and so on. That's the bit that we really want. That's the operational capability object's uh, real benefit. And that's the stuff you can write by hand, but if you don't have to, you can use these. So finished goods warehouse is going to, well, I'm not sure I actually dragged that in the right spot. Yeah, I did. Finish Goods Warehouse. There it is. Let's go back to our der derivation view for a second. Raw Goods. And our Work in Progress. So this means our plant.workinprogress.wipoco is going to have some things like start a job. It's going to have a, a thing we can trigger to start a job. Uh, sorry, not to start a job, to store an inventory. That's, right. That's a terrible example. If this, if this was the one for um, a piece of equipment, we would be able to do piece of equipment dot piece of equipment OCO dot job start. And we'd obviously have to provide it with the job number and various other things. The important thing right now is this little red X usually means that we've got something we've got to configure or is incorrectly configured. We don't have these assigned to hosts. So finished goods warehouse is going and or all these are going to be the warehouse it runs on the plant and the plant belongs on the plant wide app engine. So let's drag those under the app engine, which seems fair. Now they're all assigned. We still have the red square, which is telling us something's not right. And I know what that particular thing is, and it's not necessarily what you'd imagine. Normally it means you've made an error in configuration or forgotten to configure something. 
In this case, we go to Errors Warnings. The object is out of sync with the MES database. Run at the Entity Model Builder. So now we're going to turn all of this hierarchy in our entire system platform world into an MES model. So this is where we turn our processes and our operations and our warehouses, our equipment, all of that stuff in the MES world, in the manufacturing execution system world, needs to be understood. Where product flows from one process to another, um, parameters for starting and stopping jobs, products, job codes, bill of materials, all that kind of thing. One of the aspects of system platform that saves a lot of heartache and a lot of effort is that you can use these tools to auto-generate that database in the background with all the correct names, without retyping everything, and without rechecking everything by hand. So first up, let's redeploy everything. Now, of course, deploying, if that had a genuine error, would be silly. It wouldn't, uh, firstly, to complain that you can't deploy because it's got an error. Um, secondly, it wouldn't make much sense. But in our case, we can do it because the problem is that these things don't exist in our Wonderware model. Let's go back to our model and go all the way back to plant and then say, build MES entity model. So this is gonna turn our MES database, SQL um, server database, from completely empty into having an entire plant hierarchy, including operations, equipment, processes, and everything in it. So now we do this. What I should have done is showed you the empty database first, but you'll have to take my word for it, it was empty. It was just a bunch of tables with nothing in it. Excellent. Ah, we don't have, we've got four entries. We don't have our entire plant in being created here. And that could be because we haven't deployed these ones when they're working yet. So let's deploy our OCOs. Now you notice this is a little bit slower. The OCO objects are actually quite large and include a lot of internal variables, scripting and details. Excellent. Let's do the other two. Now we don't have all of the rest of our OCOs for our, for our operational capabilities of equipment, of process and of operation. We'll add those later, but the good thing now is that we can open up our MES client and we should be able to see, for the first time, our warehouses. One of the things about the software that's going to drive you nuts, and me too, this splash screen, not a splash screen, it's actually inside this tab, that never goes away, so there's no point waiting for it. Okay, physical entities. This screen can be closed. We're effectively not looking at anything. If we wanted to see all of the physical entities, we could apply a blank filter. So we just do apply filter. This will show us all our entities. An entity is um, any, any object that has properties effectively in the MES model. It's starting to look fairly familiar. Plant, line one. Now we've got our mixing, processing, unit packing, case packing and all of the children objects in the manufacturing execution world, including our warehouses, with have features like can store turned on. These have no major feature, these have no features turned on because they don't have operational capabilities because we haven't added the OCO objects to them yet. We will do that shortly, but this gives you an idea of their ability to do storage ship, receive, running jobs, scheduling jobs. So we talked about those objects having those things. If you wanted to and you didn't have system platform experience and you didn't understand what I've just shown you, you could do all of this by hand. You could create a new, you could right click and say, give me a new entity. And then you could tick the correct boxes, but you'd have to go through all of these things and do it. We just generated an entire line in one mouse click based on the fact that we already, I mean, if you had a plant in existence and you wanted to add MES to it, if you dragged and dropped those OCO objects in the right places and you right clicked and said build MES model, bam, you're already here, you have all of this stuff, you'd be ready to go and you wouldn't have to manually create all of these, make sure they're all perfect, tick all the right boxes so you can see how much faster that could be. 
We're going to stop here for the time being, and then I'm going to record a little bit more later.